Hi, welcome to Tonaltrends.com. I'm Dean Olivet, and I am a Tonal Trend Spotter. Now let me tell you what I mean by a Tonal Trend Spotter. All it is, is it's just somebody who's like, you know, listen to a song, and maybe they're like, ooh, the flat six chord, and then they're like, oh, minor five, nice. Or maybe they're like listening to a song on the bus, and then all of a sudden it's like, oh, they just like totally dropped the beat out of that measure. You guys hear that, you guys? And then people on the bus are like, nah, we didn't hear that. And then you're like, man, is that the only place they did that? I better investigate. And then you're like, on your iPod, you're like, one, two, three, four, one, two. Oh, there it is again! You guys, these guys are like total rhythm ninjas, man. And then the people on the bus are like, what's his deal? Here's the deal. A tonal transpotter is just someone who wants to know the reasons why some songs are good songs and why some songs, not so much. That's it. See, tonal trends are just cool things that happen in songs, and we want to know about them. Now, before we get any further, it's got to be said, for the record, that most of the time, people think a good song is just good, mostly because the artists themselves performing the songs are good. I mean, we got to be 100% honest here. You can write the best song in the history of anything with all the flat six chords and all the chop, bite, chop beats out and slick tonal tricks that anybody ever thought of, but if nobody gives it a good performance, the tune is going nowhere. That said, our focus here at tonaltrends.com isn't going to be so much on the performances themselves as it's going to be on like, um, it's going to be like a magnifying glass taking a look at the tools of the musician's trade, all the ingredients people use in songwriting, the nuts and bolts. What we're gonna do is we're gonna pop the hood on some pop tunes and take a look. You ready? No? Oh, I got it. You're asking yourself, why? Why would we wanna do all this stuff? Tonal trend spot or whatever. Who cares why songs are good or bad? Well, my best answer is that I truly believe that every song anyone ever writes has the potential to be a better song. You just gotta have all the colors, you know, not just red, blue, and yellow, all of them. See, I believe every musician can develop the smarts to learn from the slick tonal tricks of others and to spot the tonal trends that have come before so that they, in turn, can in their own way build upon and even riff upon these ideas or even invent some new tonal ideas of their own. So, how did the psych get started? Long story short, way back when I was like 15, I learned about the three most popular chords in music. The one, the four, and the five chords. That's like C, F, and G, if you're in the key of C. And so after I learned about the one, four, five chords, I was like, great, good to know. But what are the fourth, fifth, and sixth most popular chords? How many chords are there even out there that people use? 10, 20, 30, 1,000? Years went by and no one would give me a good answer. I was always popping into bookstores and checking out music magazines and stuff. I even went to a fancy music college and got a bona fide music theory degree, trying to figure it all out. And I was just like, you know, kind of messing around. Now don't get me wrong, while I was getting that degree, I learned a lot of cool stuff and even some stuff, you know, that was like, you know. But so yeah, here's the thing. After four years was up, I still couldn't definitively answer my first basic question that I had years earlier. What are the next most popular chords after the one, four, and five? Then one day it hit me. Why don't I just figure it out? I'm smart. I mean, how hard could it be? So with that, I began my journey down the path to tonal trend, spotter domination. Actually, I kind of hit a pretty big wall early on. Where was I supposed to start? I mean, write down all the chords of all the songs that ever were and take the data from that? Yeah, no, I didn't do that. But here's what I did instead. See, Rolling Stone magazine had this list, the 500 greatest songs of all time. That wasn't every song ever, but it was authoritative and large enough that I figured, well, maybe I could start with that. So I did. And you know what? Based on that list and even some work that I've been doing uh, beyond that initial survey, it turns out the next most popular chords in music are what we call the flat seven chord, the minor six chord, and the minor two. That would be B flat, A minor, and D minor. There you go, that's the answer. And that's just one cool thing. I've been finding other stuff too as I've been cataloging all these tunes for the Tonal Trends project. 
Why well, I know what else? Turns out that the keys of A, E, and G are the most popular keys people write songs in. I think that's because they're probably the easiest songs to like write on your guitar. I'm a guitar teacher also, so I have a bias, but seriously. If you, play, if you play guitar, you know what I'm talking about. Like the F chord, I think it's hard to play. So that's probably why the keys of C and F didn't make the top three. What else song? About 9% of the songs I've done so far have modulations to other keys, which is kind of a lot if you think about it. I mean, I never changed key like ever when I first started writing songs. Uh, I still don't that much. But I guess the pros do, or the people who like, get their songs on the radio. Um, otherwise, I've also been finding out some cool stuff about drumming and rhythm. Like how less than 2% of songs I have in my database change tempos more than a few beats per minute during a song. Just 2%. Um, so yeah, you getting hungry yet? You want to know what the 7th, 8th, and ninth most popular chords are? Well then come on in and take a look around. I'm super excited to start spotting some tonal trends with you guys. Alright, the first place you want to go now, especially if you haven't had a lot of experience with pop music concepts and lingo, is the spotter spark, the, what I call the spotter smarts page up around here somewhere. That's where you can start finding out all about the ingredients and the nuts and bolts and stuff. Scales, choruses, beats per minute, chord numerals, tonalities, what key a song is in, all that stuff. If you already know most all that stuff, or if you'd like to learn it all on the fly in like a more immersive way, you could skip to the Spotter Syncs blog up here somewhere. That's where we'll point out all the tonal trends a song has in real time. Uh, maybe like, um, you know, your iTunes or iPod or some other music player. Simply start the song when the Spotter Syncs says to, and your tonal trends guided tour begins. I mean, it's like a song safari. You gotta check it out. And then somewhere right up here, this is my favorite, the real fruit of the Tonal Trends Spotter Project, the Spotter Stats page. See, some of the best awesomeness in Tonal Trends Spotting shows up when we bust out the findings pulled from our database. The database is where we found out that the most common key to write a, a pop song in was A, or that 44.7% of songs have a bridge. That's like a third section. Also, did you know the most popular tempo view so far is 118 beats per minute? We'll present all these things in like cool charts and video presentations and stuff. And actually, you should probably just go there right now. It's the coolest. Um, and also, because of cross-referencing, there's unlimited numbers of ways that we can examine and present the data. Questions people have like, well, what's the most common tempo in number one singles? Or maybe like, uh, what are the most common chords people use when they're writing in F-sharp doing? Stuff like that. It's totally on the table. And as the database grows with each new song spotted, and as data entered into the spreadsheet dinger I got, the better the stats get. I mean, it just keeps getting better and better and better. Well, that's enough for now. So as the other spotter stuff that's, uh, that's last, it's up over here somewhere. You can just watch the intro videos on the pages themselves for more in-depth uh, explanations on what all those other things are about. So before we go though, I gotta say it one more time. I firmly believe that you don't have to be a tonal trend spotter to be a good musician. I believe the number one rule of music is, if it sounds good, it's right. Regardless of whether you know how to spot the concepts, or use the music lingo or whatever. I want to be clear, tonaltrends.com is not a specific how to do it site, it's just a hey dudes, check it out how these guys did it, isn't that cool website. We want to show you the ingredients and the recipes of the songs you love, but at the end of the day, if you're going to make music yourself, you got to be the chef. So yeah, thanks a lot, and don't forget to like us on all social media sites like Facebook and stuff. Oh, you can also subscribe to YouTube, or join our mailing list. And if you like this kind of stuff and you want to do it too, you can even submit your own videos uh, to the blogs or start your own YouTube channel doing it or whatever you want to do. More ideas about that sort of thing in the Spotter Suppliers page in the Stuff menu. Uh, so yeah, thanks everybody. Let's get to it.